Hola, I'm Margaret from Moon in Spain, and I'm greeting you from one of my favorite little secrets here in Granada. Right now I'm in the gardens of an old Moorish palace that is now called the Cuarto Real de Santo Domingo. So I'm gonna walk you through um, one of the most beautiful Moorish rooms and also some of the ruins as well. Right now I'm in the gardens, like I said, so I'm surrounded by fountains and pomegranate trees and orange trees. Um, I'll go through and show you some as well. And then afterwards, we're gonna take a visit to another one of my favorite places in Granada, which is the Mer Mercado de San Agustin, our fresh food market here in Granada. So let's go and enjoy this lovely day. So you can see the beautiful fountain out here in the gardens, all of the flowers, plants, and trees. And it's literally filled with pomegranate trees. So here you have a pomegranate tree right here in front of me, another one next to it. You can see the pomegranates starting to change colors. And now we are going to go in so I can show you the Cuba, which is the reception room of the Moorish Palace and then some of the ruins as well. So just to walk through what was the um, palace here from the 13th century. It was built during the time of the Nazareth dynasty, actually during the time of the Almohads, um, during the time of Al-Andalus here on the Iberian Peninsula. And the Kubbat or the reception room is what has been preserved. Um, so you can see the Arabic script. Um, you can also see um, the area of the welcome hall, um, the ornate wooden ceiling, and also the beautiful tiles. It might remind you quite a bit of parts of the Alhambra. And there are also the ruins um, that have been recently opened and are being restored that are part of what were some of the military barracks as well. So the palace was used um, by the kings and the queens for the, during the time of Ramadan. Um, so this is during the 13th century, even just as the Alhambra um, was becoming very important during the Nazareth dynasty. Um, but they also had the military part of the palace as well. And the palace is built um, in what used to be called the Barrio de los Alfarreros, um, which was basically where a lot of pottery was produced. It was also called Alfajarin, was the neighborhood. Um, but it's still a beautiful, just small little secret of Granada that you can see here, um, basically near the Jewish quarter of Granada, the Realejo. So you can see still some of the beautiful flowers that are out in the garden. The garden here actually used to be much larger, um, part of what is now a public park. And there are still original parts of the 13th century fountain as well that you can see here. That used to be at the entrance to the palace, so right here. And now you have here just what is the main entrance to the Cuarto Real de Santo Domingo. And now we're going to continue walking down the Cuesta de Aisha. And then I'm going to walk down into the center of Granada, passing by our cathedral and then eventually to our marketplace. Here you can see just on the streets coming up to our marketplace, we also have different fruits and vegetable stands um, where you can purchase fresh fruits and vegetables, some homemade gazpacho or ajo blanco. There's also a stand with lots of different types of olives, um, some dried beans, fresh herbs, um, and different types of tea as well. Okay, so here we are at the entrance to the Mercado de San Agustin, our local market here in the center of the city of Granada. So we are going to go in and visit one of my friends, Maria, and show you a bit more of the market. So if I sound muffled, it's because we have a new mask law in Andalusia. Um, hasn't really changed my life much because I always wear a mask. Um, but now we have a 100 euro fine uh, for not ma wearing a mask. So. That's just how we roll around here. So let's go on and visit the market. You can see people sitting out here having some tapas as well. Okay, so I'm just coming in to the market. It's obviously fairly quiet, like everything is. 
But this is the stand here of my friend Maria. She has, it used to be all frozen food that she had here, but now she's dedicated 100% to all different types of olive oil. So we can say, hola, hola Maria. <laughs> okay, so Maria is going to cut some bread because she's gonna let me taste um, this olive oil that is from an olive tree that was actually brought over from Tunis, so from Africa, um, in the 8th century. And it was brought to a town called Iyora here in Granada. And here's, you can see the box here. It says Lucio 642 because the original olive trees in this area um, were from 642, but then there was a drought. And so um, about 100 years later, they brought over the other trees from what is now Tunis. So she's gonna let me taste that olive oil. She also has an olive oil here from her town. She's from a small town called Cortes y Graena. And actually there's only about 40 people that live in her town and there's only one actual house. Um, the rest of the homes in her town are all caves. So she was raised in a cave, a cave home. Um, so that's sort of neat. Okay, here's my beautiful friend, Maria. She's gonna let me taste the olive oil that's from her town, from Cortes y Graena. So you can see she has out this nice stand. So when you get a chance to come to Granada to visit, you can come here and visit Maria. So she set out this olive oil here for me to taste and some bread and you can see the lovely stand here and all the different types of olive oil that she has. I mean, you could spend hours here tasting olive oil. Okay, so now she's giving me another olive oil. Well, she has the one from her town. I forgot to mention too that um, the olive oil from her town, they're from the olive trees that were from, that her grandfather planted. So they've been in her family now for generations. And now she also gave me the one from the olive tree um, from the 8th century. And now she's giving me another one from one of my very favorite towns that we will visit eventually, um, the city of Ubeda. I'm just gonna close up here so you can see the different colors of the oil as well. The first one on the left, that's the one from her town. Um, and the next one is from um, the olive trees I was telling you that were brought over from North Africa. And then the one here on the right, this really deep green, is actually called Esmeralda, the name of the oil that's from the city of Ubeda. You can see the color. So that depends on the variety, um, also how old the oil is, if it's right um, when it was first pressed or if time has passed. Also, just here, right across from Maria, there's a place that makes sushi. So you can come here and have a glass of wine and some sushi as well, which is a really nice addition um, to our markets. You can see some life going on, people enjoying some tapas, some drinks, buying their fresh fish. So I just wanna show you a little bit more of Maria's stand here. I call it her olive oil museum because she has so many different types of olive oil and all these beautiful bottles that you can see here, different containers. Um, but it's all extra virgin olive oil. We really don't have an excuse to be eating or having any other type of olive oil in Spain. Uh, we produce olive oil in I think 34 different provinces in the country. Um, so you can pretty much get olive oil everywhere except for um, the most northern part of the country. Um, and like I said, we don't really need to consume any olive oil that's not extra virgin. You can use it to fry, to saute, or to eat, as we say, cold, um, to dip bread in, or for salads, to put on top of a gazpacho or samorejo, or any type of dish as well. You know, Spain is the biggest producer of olive oil in the world. And actually the majority of the olive oil or, or the largest place where they produce it is in the province of Jaén, which is just north of Granada. Okay, well, we're gonna say goodbye now to Maria, but remember to come and visit her soon. Okay, adios. <laughs> And now the market's changed in Granada. So it used to be just a regular fresh food market. You can see here um, the meat stands. 
the butchers, we would say. But now you can come in the afternoon and you can all enjoy a glass of wine or a tapa. You can buy meat and have it grilled for you. Stands here as well. See all the fresh fish. So this is probably my favorite um, fish counter here. You can see all the fresh seafood from different areas here along the coast. Some from areas of Huelva, Cadiz, so that will be the Atlantic part of our coastline. And also some fresh shellfish from here in Granada as well. And here you can also order fish or shellfish and they will prepare it for you and you can sit down at one of the tables and enjoy it right here in the market. So you can see also here plates of shrimp and the boquerones in vinagre. So these are fresh anchovies that are marinated in olive oil and vinegar and salt. They also have here a fresh tu um, tuna tataki that you can order as well. Fresh um, sausage and cheese. And then there's a, another restaurant down here. When I first moved to Granada, um, 25 years ago, this was the only restaurant that was in the market. So now we have all different places where you can get something to eat. So you can see how this adds a little bit more life to the market in Granada. Um, this is a place where you can get a vermouth and then have a small appetizer with it, some olives, some pickled artichokes. We have some more um, cured fish, some smoked sardines as well, olives as well pickles so you can have a glass of wine for example like this wine here and um, that i'm going to enjoy it's actually a mencia wine a uh, mencia wine comes from galicia and castilla y leon this one in particular is from the bierzo wine region which is right between for example santiago de compostela and the city of leon and he's going to give me a tapa of a ham um, that's from here from granada Okay, so the place where I'm here having um, the glass of Mencia wine, like I said, it's from the Bierso wine region. Um, it's called Hamon Sal, and this is actually a ham that's produced here in Granada in a town called Valde Rubio. Um, it is 50% duroc, is the um, type of the pig, duroc, D U R O C, um, and then half the white pig, which is what we use. Um, for the ham mostly in the Alpujarra region, which is the lower part of the Sierra Nevada here in Granada. Um, but these are actually here from Granada, from the town of Valde Rubio. So you can see the nice tapa here of the ham, and the glass of mencia. Um, he also has a lot of really nice different types of cheese um, and other sausages as well, salchichon, which is more like a salami, um, chorizo as well, he even has some bacalao, the salt cod. Okay, so we're continuing on with just one more tapa, another glass of the Mencia wine, of course. And this cheese is called Leche de Primavera, um, the spring milk, because it is in the spring when the sheep go out in the pasture and they have all the wonderful flowers and herbs to eat. That gives the best flavor to the milk and eventually to the cheese. So it's called Leche de Primavera. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed visiting our lovely market, San Agustin, and meeting my friend uh, Maria. It's a really nice concept that we have here in the market. We can get um, a glass of wine or a beer or something else to drink, and then you get a free tapa with it. But you can also order food, um, like I said, from the fish stands or from the butcher as well, and they'll grill it for you or fry it. Um, so it's a, quite a nice way to enjoy the city of Granada. Um, but I'm standing in front of one of the landmarks here in Granada that's very important to the city. It's called Los Italianos. It's 
our most famous ice cream shop in the city. I'm actually the owner of it died a few years ago. Her name was Cecilia. Here you can see the main entrance, the front entrance to Los Italianos. It's on the Gran Via, our main street here in Granada, basically the Broadway. Okay, and here you have the back entrance. Um, Los Italianos was open in 1936. Uh, so it's been here for quite a long time. And usually there's a very long line going to go in to get an ice cream. People wait for as long as possible. And then here in this back sort of pedestrian street, also this is where they, they have another place that they open up when it's very busy and it's also where they keep all the ice cream as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed our visit today to, to some of the secrets of Granada, the Cuarto Real de Santo Domingo, and meeting my friend Maria, uh, and visiting our small but fun market of San Agustin here in the city. So when you come back to Granada to visit, don't forget to visit those places. Um, I'm standing just to close the video um, by one of the olive trees that's hundreds of years old. Um, so please remember to give a thumbs up to the videos and subscribe to Moon in Spain. If you subscribe with the bell, then you get a notice every time we post a new video. So thank you and hasta pronto.